Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my God. The villains and the wolves. Oh, my God. Hello, and welcome back to Love Letters, a Universal Sound. And I'm your host, Deborah Washington. And today, we're going to talk about cheaters. You can look your very best, and you know you do, and fine and sexy, smell good and everything, and still have somebody that you care about cheat on you. Why do you think they do that? To me, I believe people cheat is because they selfish. They really don't love you. And they think that there's something more in life than just you. Did I get that? Your husband, you could be married. And at the beginning, he, example, let me change that. That could be your boyfriend before you get married. Let's change and just do that. He takes you out and everything. A week later, you're in the bed opening up your legs real wide. And y'all wiggling around having sex and giving each other your best behavior. And you don't even know his middle name. And you like it. And you think that's love. And you tell everybody you got a boyfriend talking about how good he is and how what he got. And then you think he's your boyfriend. But that's what he's been practicing all the time. You just know you just that number, you just one of those numbers. But you're the one, one of the girls that he liked to have sex with. So you persuade him to marry you. Or is you're not going to give him nothing no more. So you get married. He's giving you everything you, he thinks you want him to do or give you. And time passes, sometime not that long, before he's back in the same old routine. And you, you, you know there's something wrong because you have to keep starting all over in the relationship. You're not building. You're not growing. And then you realize you heard one of the gay girls say, mm, when he was shaking you out, they, they knew him first. They mm, she must don't know him. She holding hands and everything. She even got baby hair. She think he's all into her. She she don't know him. Mm-mm. Let me tell you something. Do you think you followed your warning signs when you met this man? And you jumped into bed with him less than a week. And you did everything you could to get him to marry you, and he did. And you think he's going to be with you for the rest of your life. And you know for a fact he cheated on you. He cheated on that girl for you. And he had children by her. He's angry with that girl. You have more than that other lady had that the children he has with. You have more than that, her. And that's why he married you. So for security. And you think he's going to stay with you? You have the same thing she has. But you just have more money. Or are you 
offering him something that he likes for now. Now you're pregnant. You want to know where your man is at or your husband. You know where he's at? Over the baby mama's house. Do you honestly think he was going to just not go back and forth? And so you feel in some kind of way. And then you start praying. And then you ask God, what is love? And then a voice, a soft voice, communicates with you and say, you should have sustained. And that would have held his interest long enough to get to know you. And you both would know if it's real. But you got to keep God in the middle, the center of the equation. Or your mind is always going to be messed up because you're ignoring that you fell in love with a cheater, a womanizer. A man that likes to control his woman. And long as you doing stuff and giving him his way, he's going to be around you and give you what you want. And that's him. And you think sex is love. And you think that you got a man that was better than where you came from. That you came from a dysfunctional family, but you was able to get a good job and finish school and everything, but you still got that mentality right there because you did not know that You fell in love with a cheater. He's not capable of ever loving you. So is it time loss? All in the name of love. But to him, it could be lust or vice versa. You could be, on the other hand, You could be rich and famous and financially free. And the man that you met in college is rich and famous and financially free. You know you have that in common. But you guys are physically attracted to each other. What love has to do with that? But you don't really know. You don't understand. You don't know what real love is because you've never seen it in your family. Your dad never loved your mom. He was never home. So you didn't know what it was. You thought when he's having sex with you, you thought that was love. Did you wait to get to know him? It doesn't really matter if you're rich or poor. If you follow the same the same movements, the same ways, the method of operation when you inter- meet somebody in a relationship, you get the pretty much the same result. Cheaters.
if you meet somebody that's beautiful and saying all the things to you and you don't want to know nothing, you just want to know, have him to just keep talking to you. And you don't know his middle name. You're opening up the door to be emotionally and mentally hurt. Why do these men tell you that they love you and they get tired of you and tell you you gain weight? Go in the room and go fix your hair or something. Why is he talking to you like that? He didn't care. You was big bony when you met him. But now he's nitpicking you. And then when you went to go touch him and say, sweetie, we can be okay. I love you. I'm going to keep trying. Well, he says I have to go. Make you want to call cheaters, huh? <laughs> and find out for yourself because he's not telling you nothing. <laughs> You just wondering when you he's not even making love to you like he used to. He used to be hungry for you. Now he come home acting like he's all full. <laughs> I wonder why. And you wonder why too, huh? What you could have done to get the guy that you love to really, really love you back. Hmm? Take your time. You should have did that in the beginning. You should have followed your first mind. The truth set your mind free. Remember me telling you that? In the other episodes, be honest and pay close attention to what is being said to you. Sometimes women get so excited, men do, they talk so fast, they talk so much, they didn't spill all the beings of their whole life. And then the cheater or the womanizer or the narcissist, the control freak, that's in your life and standing in, in your face, bringing you things and doing things for you. You think it's all for you, huh? You think he because he's doing that because he loves you. No. Those type of people are not interested in real love. If there's something that they want from you, they know how to go after it and get it. And by you not understanding what's happening, you fall victim of the womanizer, the cheater, the narcissist, the control freak, the cocky guy, the arrogant guy, the guy that verbally say things to you, that he say you beautiful, the next day he taking you out and he say, What's wrong with you? You don't look that good today. Nitpicking you. That's your husband. Time loss. Is it time loss? I guess you can learn from everything, huh? And then you pray. Heavenly Father, what is love? And you knew something wasn't right when he didn't come home last night. But in the back of your mind, the Lord is telling you that this love shall soon demise due to fantasy, lust, 
and the promises and the mistrust and the lying and the cheating. You pray and then God tells you and you know something wasn't right. All of the fuss and the fights still in the back of your mind, the Lord is still telling you that this relationship that you're in shall soon demise due to fantasy and the lust and the promises and the mistrust and the lying and the cheating. But you're still trying to fix it. You did not get to know that person You guys did not know each other and you moved too fast. Does a cart come before the horse? So you want to call three? You get on the phone and you want to call cheaters. Pay some money, get an investigator. Because a man ain't telling you the truth. Going through all this emotion. You need to take your time. The reason why I'm saying it, because I was one of those women. I met someone, I thought they loved me at first sight. This person, tall and beautiful. I didn't even know what a womanizer was. (laughs) We were married 45 days. This is my second husband. The first one was 25 years. We walking to our graduation, the second husband. He chased me so hard, even took me to the Social Security building, and got my name changed to Washington. Quickly, move fast moving my home real fast. We're walking to a graduation. And this this is my story. I could tell my story. It happened to me. Holding hands. And a younger woman walked by with a dress on, looking at him and switching right past us. He let my hand go and was falling behind her. (laughs) I ain't never had nobody do me like that. I thought something was wrong with him mentally. But I had married him. I didn't even know his mother. When I met his mother, she said, Deborah, after I introduced myself to her, she said, if I would have knew you was going to marry my son, I would have told you to run. He's a skirt chaser. I said, it's too late. We already married. I couldn't do nothing right. He was mean to my dogs and mean to me. He made me feel like some dirty gum stuck underneath my shoe. He tried to control me and to change me. I didn't know what to do because I believe in marriage, but I moved too fast. Who gets married in 45 days? Someone grown, when you think you're grown, you think that You don't you know what you want and what you don't want? 
cheaters. But I want to say, on the other hand, there are people who really, really are not cheaters. You know, I'm not trying to make it seem all gloom and doom, but I just haven't really met them. But I have seen people that do not cheat on their wife or their husband. They say, that's my better half. <laughs> I love Betty. Even though she's 15 years older than me. I would never leave her. On the other hand, it could be, I, I love Susie. We're the same age. You can find real love. I put a lot of emphasis on the cheaters because they are really real. <laughs> And I just want you to know that I know that. I've been married two times, 25 years, and then five years. How many years is that in someone's life? Gonna make sure you go somewhere and sit down and, and you think and evaluate your life. Make sure you don't do that again, because life is too short. And you pray to your Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, and he will help you. He knows the lies before they're told. He knows the tears before they are shown. He knows if you like him or not. He knows if you know him. He's the one that can change a mind and control an emotion. Why not talk to him? He's not the devil. You rush too soon into a cheater's arm, into a person that you, it's, it's an illusion that you believe that he really, he's really, they really good at that. I was married for 25 years. And I said, you're my best friend. And you know what he said to me? No, I'm not your best friend, and you my wife. I said, but you know me. He said, I know all of you. You told me everything. I know everything you like. Okay. When is dinner? Don't you want to be with someone that really knows you, that really cares about you? You can feel it, and you can feel yourself growing. And you get deeper and deeper in love. Isn't that a wonderful thing? But if you are with a cheater and he's so, and they're not going to respect you anyway because they, when a cheater gets away with something, they lose respect for you because you don't even know what he did last night. He probably was in the bed with two women. And come home, don't want you touching him. You have to identify who you marry before you marry. Or you will be one of the saddest people in the world. I said one of them because there's a lot of sad people in the world. And it's hard to recover once you, once you feel betrayed or cheated on. It's not the same. You loyal, you haven't been with nobody but this person that you care about. And this person been giving it away all every other night. It's not the same. How could you build, how could your love build on betrayal? That's not a good foundation. And then 
It's so hard to heal my neighbor. There's a person that was married 35 years. Successful. Both of them were successful. But they grew apart. She didn't even know that he was into drugs and chasing women. Arguing with her and stressing her out. She wasn't even looking the same. He was always verbally abusing her. She gave him 35 years. And she said, now I'm older and nobody will want me. But she's still beautiful. But mentally, she's damaged. Get to know the person before you marry. Take your time. It's four corners to a person's character. It takes years for you to really get to know the person so you can see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Does a person believe in God? Can you pray and talk to God with that person? Do you understand the Lord thy God? If you don't, then the enemies going to come in there. The villains and the wolves will come in there and break you up and emotion, emotionally and scar your mind up. Learn from other people's mistakes before you open up your heart, mind, and soul to someone you want to love but really is a deceiver and a cheater. And then you say time loss. This is, he wasted my time 15, 20 years of my life and all in the name of a one-sided love. All in the name of love. Talk later. This hurts me so, darling. Cause I see I have to let you go. Heavenly Father, what is love?